The Young Turks, the regressive meme that keeps on giving. The reason that Cenk Uger and co. are so entertaining and a source of such derision is probably because they perfectly embody everything that's wrong with far leftist political news media at the present time. Though I think the Young Turks were headed in this direction for quite some time now, politically correct social justice style thinking by its nature, it inevitably becomes contradictory, irrational and driven by narrative over facts. But if I was to truly pinpoint a moment when they really began to jump the far left shark, it was following the Bill Maher, Ben Affleck, Sam Harris debacle, in which it became clear that Cenk's intellectual dishonesty was coming to the fore. The problem is when you conflate Islam, criticizing Islam with generalizing about Muslims. Yep, hashtag not all, right? Sam never implied that the issue was all Muslims. He was merely calling out the ideology that motivates a great number of people to engage in violent behavior. The left continues to do this. It, it accuses critics of Islamic violence of conflating the behaviors of just a few Islamist extremists with all Muslims. This has become incredibly tiresome as an argument. To push back against this is just exhausting. But I think the Young Turks' cognitive biases became abundantly clear in October of 2014, when Schenk refused to recognize the differences in scope, scale, and frequency between Christian and Islamic-motivated violence in his three-hour conversation with Sam Harris, which unfortunately went nowhere. But again, we have to be honest about the difference between Christianity and Islam here. And it, it, let, let but me, I'm not seeing well, it. Uh, I mean, we just had a whole conversation well, no, about we're not, it. We're not done. We're not done. So okay. one very important piece here is the, is the example of Muhammad and the example of Jesus. Muhammad was not a hippie who got crucified, right? Muhammad was a conquering warlord. Yeah, but Jesus he, wanted to conquer the world. He no, just no, sucked at it. I'm sorry. I don't remember that part of the Bible when Jesus called for world domination. He was not a, he was not ordering people's heads cut off. The Sermon on the Mount doesn't give you, okay, let's cut, cut the heads off of no, those, the those on the 300 Jews. That's, right. If you want to pick, cherry pick the good parts of the Bible, there are plenty. Yeah. First of all, the Bible is a vast and, and vastly self-contradictory book, right? right? The Quran is a much shorter, much more streamlined book, and it is all, or it has a central message, which is very much in harmony with the example of Muhammad. You, you should, spread this one true faith to the ends of the earth, and you spread this by conquest, not conversation. It is, it is convert or die, or if you happen to be a person of the book, you can live as a dimmy. I think Cenk knows Sam is right, but he's terrified to admit it. And I can only put it down to intellectual dishonesty. He's a former Muslim. He knows what's in the holy book. He knows what's going on. The, the Holocaust was not a straightforward and honest implementation of Christian doctrine. You can't look into the Bible and get a, a good Christian justification for the Holocaust. What you get with the, what, Of course you no, can! No, 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 you of can't! Of course! It says what kill you, them all! That no, don't believe! It, it, of course! Of course! Of course! Of course! Of course! Violence in Christianity is incredibly rare and mostly an artifact of the past, it's fair to say. For example, since 1977, there have been eight murders, 17 attempted murders, 42 bombings, and 186 arsons targeted at abortion clinics and providers across the United States. Okay, these murders are tragic, absolutely, but there is simply no comparison when it comes to Islamic attacks, of which there have been over 30,000 attacks since 9-11. In fact, in the last 30 days since making this video, there's been 172 Islamic attacks in 30 different countries, killing 1,033 people and injuring 1,454. The scale of the problem matters. It became clear Cenk was no longer willing to appreciate the differences and wished to simply virtue signal about how progressive he was for bashing Christianity. Islam will always get off scot-free in Cenk's book because as soon as someone calls out the motivational doctrine behind the next Islamic terrorist attack, Cenk will go back to the regressive playbook by labeling people Islamophobic, hashtag not all arguments, uh, this is just racism, what about the Crusades, Christianity has its violent elements as well, don't you know, etc, etc. Cenk's continued mischaracterization of Sam Harris on this issue has been utterly appalling and entirely personal. It's a vendetta Cenk seems to have with him. You know, being all nice and professional in person, but endlessly deriding him as soon as his back is turned. Even though I've given you full context, tell me how the beloved Dr. Harris is once again misrepresented by his own words. 
and misunderstood by feeble minds like Noam Chomsky. Oh, Dr. Harris, what have they done to you? No one does pseudo-intellectual as well as Newt yeah. Gingrich, with one obvious exception. <clears throat> Sam Harris. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you went there. However, their lack of objectivity doesn't just end with religious discussion. It also continues with unequivocal support of homegrown terrorist organization Black Lives Matter. Embarrassingly, back in July, Chenk was so eager to perpetuate the progressive narrative that BLM are nothing more than a peaceful movement agitating for racial equality and not a movement that agitates for violence. He mistook something Sarah Palin said in an interview, so let's listen. They're not protesters, you know, these are thugs, they're rioters. And I, I, yeah, I'm calling out the media saying, quit claiming that these rioters are peaceful. They're stomping on a flag, figuratively and literally, shouting the death to cops. Uh, but let's note there that she said these protesters, they're not people. Quit claiming that these rioters are peaceful. Quit claiming that these rioters are peaceful. So she actually said peaceful, but if you listen to it for the first time, you'd be forgiven for believing that she said people. But then what's extraordinary is he proceeds to read what she said. He reads a quote of what she said in the interview. And it's clear she said peaceful. He reads her verbatim and uses the word peaceful, but he doesn't correct himself. She says, media, quit claiming the rioters are peaceful as they stomp on our flag, shout death to cops. He criticizes her and her own personal controversies back in Alaska or whatever, as opposed to engaging in her arguments on the subject of BLM and maintains his stance that she said they aren't people. I mean, this is just absolutely mind-bogglingly ridiculous. I mean, talk about cognitive bias. But then it actually gets worse. This original video was so damning and TYT came in for so much criticism that they removed the video entirely and then followed it up with a weasel apology, although it wasn't really an apology, to be honest, in which he says he now realizes that she used the word peaceful and not people. A little while ago, I did a video on Sarah Palin and uh, how she attacked Black Lives Matter. And in that video, there's a word that's unclear. Uh, it could sound, it sounded both like people and peaceful. So I thought she said that they are not people. She says, media, quit claiming the rioters are peaceful as they stomp on our flag, shout death to cops. Uh, it turns out, I think that in this proper context, it is that she did say they are not they were not peaceful. Now, what do you mean proper context, Cenk, all right? Context had nothing to do with the word she used. She said peaceful. Apologize and stop trying to make it look like you still have a leg to stand on here. And then he goes on to criticize her anyway, which kills me. So we don't want to be wrong. Now, the essence of that video was overall absolutely right. She said Black Lives Matter is responsible for the violence. She said they're thugs. <laughs> And I pointed out that her family literally caused a riot in Alaska. 20 people involved in a, in, in a fight. Unbelievable. I mean, the arrogance of this man. There's no apology. There's no humility. Instead, he continues to disavow BLM protesters and rioters of any of the violence they engaged in in the event in question. BLM didn't do nothing. He's basically saying here, yeah, I was wrong about Sarah Palin's quote, but I was still right. I was wrong, but I was right because I'm intellectually dishonest that way to the highest possible degree. And I pointed out that her family literally caused a riot in Alaska. 20 people involved in a, in, in a fight, one violent episode after another. Drunken so it, it, she, her, she does live the thug life, but we gotta make sure every part of it is right. So now he's changing the subject, all right? This is just pathetic. A demonstration of a complete lack of journalistic integrity. TYT digital tabloid clickbait media with the most regressive, politically correct slant you could possibly imagine. So we'll move on. As you know, at the same event, TYT completely fell apart at the Republican National Convention in which Alex Jones of Infowars playfully trolled them and Chenk and Anna lost their shit displaying their lack of professionalism. Attention, get off the stage, you fat fuck, get off. Oh, no, Chenk, relax. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where are you, Saudi Arabia, you dumbass? It's honestly difficult to believe this isn't a scene from a movie. We talk about that all the time. Oh, right, we right. talk about that all the time. You don't know shit. Talk. What, you think the lizard people are in charge? No. Is that what you think? Now you're pissed. You're pissed. You're pissed. You're pissed. Is that what you think? You're the anti-liberal and you're pissed. But and this is where Jimmy Dore comes in and spits on Alex's face. This was embarrassing, and it showed how uncomfortable TYT have become with reporting on the news in a world that's, I think, outgrown them now. The tension is obvious here, 
this has been building for a very long time. Their audience is turning on them, their numbers are down, they're constantly getting dislikes, they're being called out on their bullshit on YouTube all the time. And I think it's because people have grown up and they've learned that TYT, like the mainstream establishment media, are totally out of touch with their viewers, with the concerns of everyday Americans, and with reality. And TYT have been exposed as hacks. These are not professional journalists. I'm a qualified journalist myself. And I don't consider what I do here on YouTube to be journalism, although maybe some of it might be, but mostly what I do is social commentary. And I can tell you, I was never taught in college to speak to people like Anna does. And yeah. so if you want to attack me for being overly emotional or for passionately, you know, defending those who are defenseless, then go ahead, you can attack me all you want. But am I saying that I'm better than you? I guess I'm going a little further than you are. Yeah, I'm fucking better than you, okay? Much better than you. You are garbage, okay? If you get a rise out of attacking the powerless, you're garbage. And you can call me a social justice warrior. You can call me whatever the fuck you want. At this point, I don't give a shit. How do they justify the words that are coming out of her mouth? Seriously, where is the professional decorum? Firstly, she's championing social justice, which is a whole other problem in and of itself. But she's shouting at the camera that she's better than you and effing and blinding and calling you garbage. Okay, so... <laughs> You see, for years, people thought these guys are solid, high-quality, alternative news media. You know, the reality is they're ideologues with some serious high production values. You know, a nice set, some good lighting, you know, nothing more. They're well-funded. As for this outburst... I have no respect for women who voted for Trump, okay? Yeah, me too. I think so poorly of them, and the reason why is because... Look, I don't think that you're a single-issue voter. I just think you're dumb. Okay, I think you're fucking dumb. <laughs> no respect for women who voted for Trump? Well, if that isn't the best way to alienate your audience and demonize a demographic of people, I don't know what is. This is all TYT are about now. Narratives over fact, emotional arguments, sanctimonious morality policing, and virtue signaling. Do you remember when there was a hate crime hoax in Mississippi in which someone set fire to a black Baptist church and spray painted, vote Trump on the side of the building? This is a total false flag. Of course, TYT ran with the story, believing it immediately without any fact-checking. Because like I say, they're not journalists. Cenk talks about systematic, violent, white-on-black racism from the past. And he wants to make believe that it's just as rife today as it always was. Okay, if you're not aware of the history of terrorism in this country, uh, racists were, have been terrorizing black people in this country for a long time. And I'm not just talking about slavery. I'm talking about... Uh, Birmingham used to have a nickname during the civil rights era. It was called Bombingham. Then flash forward a few weeks later, and they're forced to admit that this story was in fact a hate crime hoax. It was a black member of the congregation who committed the act. But what do you think Cenk does? You let the authorities look into it. It turns out it wasn't somebody from the outside. It was actually a parishioner. Yeah. Maybe he's, because he has a track record of stealing things, maybe he stole something from the church but burned it down to cover it up and writes yeah. vote Trump. Uh, to make it seem like it's political. Maybe he's crazy, maybe, you know, so let the authorities sort that out. Suddenly we don't really know what the perpetrator's motivation was. Let's defer to the police. They're saying it wasn't politically motivated. You know, mm, let's, let's wait and see. Yet before, they were happy to jump to conclusions and say it was a Trump supporter, right? Right, probably a white Trump supporter. So not taking into account the fact that most hate crimes tend to be hoaxes in the first place, actually. The Young Turks are so obsessed with the notion that black people can never be racist and that white people are all terrible that when they covered the horrific kidnapping in Chicago recently, they barely, they reluctantly covered the fact that it was four black people attacking a white man, despite the attack being racially motivated, the perpetrators clearly shouting racist things at the white mentally challenged man. TYT called the video, Mentally Disabled Man Beaten and Tortured. But if the roles were reversed and it was four white people kidnapping and torturing a black man, what do you think the video would have been called? Well, I can guarantee it would have been something like white supremacists kidnap and torture black man. TYT genuinely believe that there's a system in place in America that's oppressing black people. And this is why Chenk brings up the civil rights era, Jim Crow, slavery. He brings up the past all the time, not the present. They want to run with that narrative. So discussing this topic was probably very difficult for them. If you don't believe me, watch the full video and you'll see what I mean. Anna just launches into a rant about a series of random disconnected things and attempts to blame the corporate media for attacking BLM. 
It's amazing. So far, nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. Anyone who claims that it does, they're doing it either for attention, for a political agenda, or to smear a group of people who have legitimate concerns about the way policing happens in this country. And so the people, by the way, who, when spreading this initially, immediately inject that into it, they are showing that at the end of the day, they don't care at all about this guy. They have no empathy for that victim. He is a pawn for them to attack a political organization that they want to attack. These people, this is the best day of the year for them. For some people, yeah. for some sick individuals, when they see a particular type of crime, they think, oh good, I can now attack a group that is in no way implicated in this crime. Yes, BLM had nothing to do with this event. However, political commentators who are actually honest about what BLM is, unlike you guys, could be forgiven for believing BLM was involved. After all, it has been fond of racially motivated violence in the past. These are people who not only have no empathy, but go so far as that in all their interactions, I mean, we, we get attacked every day, they mock the very idea of having empathy for people. They don't know this guy's name, they will never find out, they don't care. They will set up no GoFundMes, tomorrow they will have forgotten about this individual, because for them, it is about a political objective and not true empathy for a guy who went through something that no one should ever experience. This statement of vomit-inducing virtue signaling is pretty rich coming from you, John. Before, when you were talking about the Mississippi church hate crime hoax, you were happy to call it a white-on-black hate crime before the facts were in, and you jumped on it, no evidence. Now, this story, it doesn't conveniently fall into your worldview that black people can never be racist. Maybe racism against white people actually exists, John, had you considered that? Now you want to wait for the facts to come in. Now you want to say that those social commentators and media pundits who've been rightfully calling out Black Lives Matter as a dangerous, violent hate movement, those people are the real sickos. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So we've gone from it had nothing to do with Black Lives Matter and those people who rightly criticize it for its outright violent behavior are terrible to BLM is just a peaceful protest group. It's awesome. Stop smearing it. The irony here is incredible because they think their opponents take any opportunity to attack BLM, including the Chicago kidnapping. But TYT are now taking this opportunity to defend it, to defend a terrorist group. Black Lives Matter, of course, gets smeared time and time again in the media. But it's par for the course when it comes to our corporate media to smear protesters because these are people who try to question authority. These are people who want to change a system, a system that has been long established and works in the favor of those who work in corporate media and, you know, the political system that we have in place to keep them down. I assume she also believes in the patriarchy? If you want to use an example that has nothing to do with race, um, the same people who claim that they voted for Donald Trump bringing up something that has nothing to do with the kidnapping and taking an opportunity out of nowhere to attack Donald Trump voters. Wonderful. Because they feel like income inequality and wealth inequality and political injustice is a big problem in the country are the same people who also had lots of really negative things to say about Occupy Wall Street. Here you were virtue signaling about how much empathy you have for the victim. And now you're talking about the election and Trump. The mental gymnastics here are off the scale. Even I thought this event was connected to BLM initially. And given the climate we live in right now, it's not hard to imagine why. Yes, racism against black people exists, but TYT refused to acknowledge that there are groups who are just outright racist against white people also. So the waters just get muddied like this. I could go on about TYT, and no doubt you can think of plenty of other examples where they've spoken in this way, but these people are not news. And as Sargon has rightly called them in the past, they're more media commentators, okay? And their commentary, it comes from a leftist political slant. You can't speak on certain issues on TYT unless you're a particular race, gender, religion, or sexuality. TYT are textbook mainstream media wannabes. They value what someone is rather than the quality of their ideas. And 2016 was a very bad year for them. They lost all their credibility and effectively became a meme. And 2017 isn't looking like it's going to bode much better. Hey, everybody. I'm Sean King. I'm uh, really excited to be uh, a new member of the Young Turks team. 